Hello there and welcome to my little arty corner on YouTube. My name's Angela and I love drawing, an artist and I'm mostly known for my work on adult colouring books and I'm taking a break at this moment from drawing sketches for the latest one. Oh yes, I'm halfway through, hopefully. So <laughs> it depends on feedback and stuff but you know that's a whole different story. But anyway, thank you so much for joining me. If you're new here, you are most welcome and I hope you enjoy what you see and you'll use a tiny bit of energy to click the subscribe button and possibly even a thumbs up for the video. The share or the, that tiny bit of energy is all it costs you to subscribe. It doesn't cost you a penny and you'd be more than welcome here. Thank you to everybody who's already subscribed. I appreciate you so much. And if you're returning all the time and you haven't subscribed yet, please do, honestly please. And um, I'd just like to say thank you for all the thumbs up and the comments and I will get back to the comments um, later on after, after this video is done and it's processing, uploading and whatever else. So there we go, but thank you. So I'm going to go back to this drawing I started a couple of days ago with you. Um, I have a break on a Thursday. Today's Friday the Oh gosh, it's Friday the 13th of May um, and um, I take a break on a Thursday to focus on getting a colouring template done for a Facebook group the, of people who like my artwork, my colouring books. It's been my way to help people through the pandemic with an opportunity to de-stress and just take time out and, you know, that kind of stuff. So this is one of my kind of typically entangled kinds of drawings and I'm using all kinds of um, abstract, stylized, organic motifs. They may get some tangle patterns in here, you never know, you never know. You know, some mooka could appear or some, uh, is it fescu, something like that, you know, and who knows, I might even add some geometrics. I haven't made any plans for this um, other than I know I want to create a clump here and see what happens. I might actually start another one off somewhere. Oh gosh, I really don't want to draw with that pen. That is stupidly enormous. That's a, a, a 10 millimeter pen. He said, stupidly enormous. Um, I thought I had a PN in here, but I don't. So what's the closest size to a PN? Hang on. Hang on, hang on. I didn't. Oh, there's my other pencil case. Yes, I'm currently using two. That's how to confuse me. That's no six, no three. No da, da, da. It's the 04s I want. There we are, we've got it. Um, a Pigma Sensei. I'll try and keep the pen the same because that. <laughs> Welcome to my world. Which pencil case is it in? Oh, I wonder where I put that. Oh, I need this. Where is it? And sometimes I can't find things for looking and then suddenly they're there in front of you. Genius. So the background for this, um, I'm using some mixed media paper from Artway and I think it's 100% recycled and it's got a bit of a tooth to it, but I've coloured it with um, Neocolor 2s and um, some water to um, get them moving and mixing and spreading and so on. Neocolor 2s are water soluble wax crayons or wax pastels depending on whether you prefer the word crayon or pastel or pastel um, and it makes a lovely background and it also takes away some of that tooth so my my pens are writing smoother on this but somebody I think it was it Shelley no Shelley Susie anyway sorry I'm useless with names especially when I've only had one mug of coffee this morning and very weak coffee because that's all I drink. Weak coffee or tea. Strong tea, weak coffee. Um, mentioned that it put um, a variation of the Neo Colours onto some smooth sketchbook paper and found it became too smooth. So just be aware of that. Um, I'm, I'm quite happy with the smoothness of this now. I'm going to enjoy doing this to that paper. I'm glad I bought it. And um, I can now make use of it. Got something stuck on my nail there. Don't know what it is. Um, however, I want. So it's about now. It's about me adding some 
um, more motifs and I'm going to use circles here. As I've said, please feel free to draw along with me. And whether you use the motifs in a similar way to I am, or whether you create own your own versions of them, or whether you just use the arrangement I'm using or do your own, that's perfectly fine. I just I hope I can I'm encouraging you to explore and experiment as well as just giving you the starting points for these designs. Now what I'm doing here is I am drawing circles and I'm trying to get them so they sort of decrease in size or as I make the, the line thicker on the opposite side to what I wanted, it's fine, it'll all work out. And then I'm putting a circle in the middle, a black circle, and then I'm having lines spreading out from that, almost like it makes a little starburst or perhaps the impression of a little indentation in the middle. Now are these seeds, are they f weird flowers? Does it matter? It could be leaves actually, they remind me a little bit of, I think it's pennywort leaves. I think it's pennywort that's got sort of circular leaves with radiating lines like that. And I'm getting them smaller as I get down to the edge. I'm trying to make the lines a little bit thinner as well and shorter. Because I thought it might be nice if I have some things that's almost look like they're tumbling down or flowing downwards or growing upwards. It's just a matter of perspective from a certain point of view. They could be going sideways if you turn it on its side. You know, I started drawing it with this, this way being up. And so it looks like these are beginning to grow from the bottom and, you know, go down like moss. But if I turn it the other way round, then these are growing upwards and these are growing, you know, dangling downwards. Sideways? Uh, looks a bit peculiar. That's all I'm going to say. This way, it does look a bit peculiar, but this way... It looks almost like I've got some ground beginning to appear here and I could put some more going that way if I wanted to. But I quite, I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm torn between having them dangling down or growing upwards. I think I quite like them dangling down, to be honest. So let's start with another cluster here. And... They are a dangly cluster rather than a, you know, your usual rounded or blobby cluster, I suppose. I just think they'll look nice. Ooh, got carried away with the size of that one in the middle. Does it matter? Not one bit. And it's quite easy to go back and adjust the sizes if you want to and so on. So how are you all doing? I hope you're doing okay. I hope you're enjoying being arty and crafty and so on. I had a, as well as doing the template yesterday, I had a bit of a quiet day. I didn't sleep very well the night before again. And um, when it came to doing art, I'm really getting obsessed with those robot-y facey things and so on. So while I was coming around this morning, if I was ready to crawl out of my bed. Um, not literally crawl out, you know, it's just a saying, isn't it? Um, I just thought it would be nice to sit and draw for a while and just take my time. I sometimes do that. Sometimes I try to get up fairly quickly and sometimes that's a mistake. But... Um, this morning I did and I was drawing robots. I might show you at the end of the video if I remember. 
don't know why I like drawing these. My original intention was to have a look at whimsical people or fanciful folk. And I just got... <laughs> just ended up drawing robots. I think that must say something about me and people in general, I think. I'm quite introverted and that may be part of the reason. Um, and it may be that um, when it comes to art, perhaps I just prefer to have my own fanciful world of things that I can have being nice and pleasant to each other because my robots would be very nice my bots they'd be nice and helpful and happy not warlike at all because that wouldn't go in my little world so for the bottom ones I'm just going to put dots in the ends of these or little crosses if I can, can't fit a dot in no, little crosses if I can fit them in and a dot if I can't and it all works out quite nicely and these ones I can't even fit a dot in because they're too little but I do want these to really trail away to little, little ones and then I'm just having a look where perhaps I need to thicken them that could do with one there Like that, that'll work. And then here, I think I might sneak part of one in here as if it's tucked behind. And then these areas, I'm just going to fill in with black because it will help to make sense of the structure. I could fill this area in with black, but I don't want to. Just because you could doesn't mean you always should. Find another way there, I think, to bring those sections out. I haven't worked out quite how I want to do that, mind you. But we'll get there. If I extended the lines all the way down to the edge of the circle, these could end up looking a bit like limpets or barnacles, with the conical shells, they're just simple cones, look a bit like a volcano, except they're not because they've got a living thing inside. But I think the bacteria have been found that can exist in lava. I could be wrong, mind you. I may have had crossover from some science fiction story or other. We're discovering a lot more about the world around us and how amazing it is even now. And some of the beliefs that we had where life couldn't exist, we've actually found life living. I say we as we in humanity or we as scientists. The odd little one mixed in with medium sized ones is quite cute as well. So don't get over hung up on having to have a complete and total gradation of shape, you know, gradual, not shape, size. Just go with the flow as long as they taper off in a pleasing way, that's all that matters. Once you've finished, then you've got an opportunity to go back and just adjust them as you wish afterwards. So actually I quite like that. I don't think I want to add anything beside these at all. I just like them just as they are. It depends how I grow this out, because it may be that I've decided I've done enough now and I might just want to trim this paper and, and call it done 
because it almost has that feeling of being done. Though there is a bit of space here and, and perhaps over here a little bit I'd like to have, this side especially. And I think here I'm going to add things that are fairly simple, I think. And I've got a feeling that I might just go with this idea of circles again. And just create some spikes of circles just like that. Yeah, I know there's four in there, but it's actually three clear and a dark one. So that, that suits my happiness for having odd numbers of things in my artwork. Clusters of them. I'm trying to work out how I can get Oh, we'll have that one coming that way. Then. There we go, that looks okay. How's that doing? To stand back and have a look. Oh, that does feel better. That that's that feels much nicer. There's still an there's still something over here that isn't quite right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to get my paper trimmer, which happens to live under my desk in a basket underneath there. Oh, don't need that bit. And I'm going to oh gosh, got the blade there, scuffing it along. I'm going to just Line those up. I can see marks in my trimmer, so you won't see what I'm doing particularly, but I can, I can see what I'm doing here. That's fine. And I'm going to actually get that. Oh gosh, I've, I've just cut the end of one off. That was daft. It's okay though. It is what it is. I could always stick it back together if I wanted to, I suppose, but I don't want to. I'm not going to fuss around with that. It is what it is. It's spilling off the edge and perhaps the others then. Just rows of dots could be hanging, coming down to the end there. I'm just having a look to see, because I think I might like just a couple of these. Perhaps spilling out towards the edge over here. just to tie it in with the other side. Just for that cohe cohesiveness, cohesiveness, yes, cohesiveness. Okay, a couple of other things. I'll tell you what I haven't done here is I haven't thickened all of these lines. So, do that paper trimmer is a godsend for me because I cannot cut straight even with a line to follow whether it's with scissors or with a straight edge and a craft knife of some kind or other I am absolutely a nightmare at doing it as you saw then I really didn't pay attention to what I was doing but it's okay these things happen and it'll be fine Just trying to increase the thickness of the left and bottom edge. That helps with layering and getting this feeling of layers going on here as well. Um, just check that I've done all of these. Not quite. They look odd if you've done some and not others. And that, that does give that sense of volume. I'm just smiling because I just glanced out the window and one of my local, one of the lo my local cats, not my cats, but they're local to me, was bouncing around there and, and playing around and, you know, running in a funny way because it's really quite windy out and that tends to set cats off with a bit of silliness. Okay, I'm looking at this and I'm not sure, I think some things might be needed here as well. 
So I think we'll just add some of these as well here because they seem to be working quite nicely as this kind of adding something to space to make things feel a bit more, you know, whatever. I, I can't think of the words at the moment, but a more pleasing kind of shape, space, shape. That's okay. Well, it looks like they've all crossed over there. And I'm just looking on the other side and perhaps, just perhaps, let's add some that perhaps go here. And I think that with one that goes there. We'll just about do it. I think so. I do like these, the bottom. That was a good plan there. Okie dokes. I'm going to get that paper trimmer up because I want to trim this edge back as well. Should have left it until I'd done it. But it is nice to just be able to... Right, let me have a look. That should do it. A little bit more could come off, but I think it'll be fine. There's a sneaky way around that one, which I'm going to do now rather than try and trim it and mess up completely again. Is um, I'll just add another one of these in here. I'll have that coming right across to the edge, so that gives me that feeling of having a border. So I think that I'm quite happy with that. I also have this bit of paper left. I have this, I could use that to write on, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to hoard little bits of paper. As lovely as they are, I'm not going to because I'll end up not using them. I have a mega clear out to do with such things because I've I've put them to one side and never used them from things I've done over the years and, you know, it's not going to happen. So now I need to decide how can I add some colour to this? Well, I think I'm going to use the Neo Colours. I've got my little palette here. I'm going to put the cut and dry foam out the way that I used the other day to add colour to things. Get my Neo Colours out. Put my little Zibaldoni out the way. Although I did have some, yeah, I've got some um, tissue here, which will be good. So I'll open these. Fan Dabby Dawsey. I need a smallish brush. I'm looking for a one I particularly like. That'll be okay. I've got an O1, uh, a zero brush. It's a Daler, it's an Aquafine, a round one. And um, it's a, an acrylic or, you know, synthetic hair brush. I don't use actual hairs. And I've got these this lovely orange. And I've also got this lovely pencil here that I haven't erased, but I will now. Now that has lifted some of the ink off there, which tells me that although the pigment ink dries on top of the Neo colours, it doesn't sink into the paper in the way it would in ordinary. That noise was me using my little Midori um, pencil um, or dust brush thing. It's like shaped like a little car or little truck or something it's got little brushes on it and it's so fun and it gets rid of eraser dust with a couple of sweeps it's brilliant i love it so i think i'm going to use a similar colors to what i've used in the background but perhaps some darker tones so let me have a look i've got this here which i think is a dark well either way it's going to be a darker orange once i've added some water to it so i'm just scribbling some down on this palette of mine here Need the water, need some water, water, water. And this will, it's so water soluble, it mixes with water and it becomes almost like a watercolour paint. The difference is this is opaque-ish, as in it's semi-opaque, 
when you have, it depends how much water you have and how much you water it down. So it will cover up my black lines, but I also know that if I want to, I can go back over them. So I just want to add a bit more colour here and perhaps some under there. Lifting things from the background. Now I could completely wreck this, of course. Um, I do want a red. I'm jumping a couple. Which is this one? This is Carmine. Which is should be a pinky red. A nice warm red. So I've got some of that down. So much fun. I know you can pick the colours up from directly from the crayons. But this way I can control just how dark they are or not. And that would be quite nice there. Just that little hint of shadow under there. And I'm going to pick some of the orange up. And just blend that in. First time I've done this, by the way, with these. So it could be an interesting experiment or not. So I've completely changed that colour there, haven't I? But I can pick some of it up with a damp brush. Lighten it again around the edges. And I've got something that's a bit more like what I'd like. I'm going to put another, this is um, just orange. It's quite a yellowy orange down. I'm going to use some of that around the edges. Again, just to bring some lightness into it. Because these are, as I say, these are semi-transparent or they're, they're quite opaque. But again, it depends how much water you have and how much pigment, but it should be able to pick that colour up a little bit. That actually is okay. That's working okay. All right, these ones in the middle, I think I want to make use of the yellow. Perhaps. And I'm being aware that I don't want to really touch the pen because I've got a sneaky suspicion Whereas this pen is normally waterproof on paper, it's now sitting on top of these Neo colours and it would be quite nice to um, avoid touching it and shifting any pigments that might shift. And now, I think for these, so I'll go with this lovely pinky colour for the petals. to get some colour up. Load my brush so I can do a couple of petals all at once. See, they're translucent and they're showing the colour through from beneath which I'm, ha I'm fine about because it gives that um, natural kind of feeling to the... I've got some hair on the end of my brush here. See if I can get it off that time. Just need a bit more of this Neo colour. I'm quite happy for the colours to vary around with these petals. I think they'll be fine. And I'm going to go back and just add some more of the red in, in places where there's less red and more orange, perhaps. I'll be okay. So that is interesting. Ish. Okay, let's just get a touch more. Darker colour towards the centre, so we've got that using colour as shadow. I did say the other day, much to, I'm sure, um, people will be wishing I used some uh, graphite to add shadow, but I didn't want to dull the colours down with 
graphite. I wanted to keep them as vibrant as I can make them. Not entirely sure this is the best way of doing that, but it is what it is and it's what I'm working with. So yeah, we'll, we'll see. I've not done this before with these. In fact, I haven't really used the Neo Colours much. I haven't done anything with them since the video I recorded on Wednesday, two days ago now. So for these, I think I want these to be nice and golden. Just because I think work with the colour that's underneath them more than anything else. The red might have been a mistake. Perhaps I should have stuck with oranges and yellows to um, tie in with the background. I don't know. So I'm adding more yellow here over this orange. This colour does liquefy again on, I shouldn't say liquefy because that's not the correct term. You hear things like this. Being a scientist, I'm particularly fussy about the terminology used. It does dissolve, reacts with water. Um, but dissolve isn't a reaction as in chemical reaction. It just mixes with the water again. So that actually, that looks, that's nice. They're quite subtle once they dry. And I quite like that. That's made me happy. Okay, let me get some more of this orangey yellow or this. You know, it says it's orange, but it's more yellow, like so. And I think I may add, may use some of this here just to mix this in to make a, a more yellowy orange. But still an orange. I think that might look quite nice with really I'm picking up bits of hair here from somewhere this might be nice here just to get some colour and perhaps to lift add some shadow and more to do that than lift it from the background at the moment. I will do something with the background, perhaps. But it is where I just want to try to separate it and get some shadow going with colour. I mean, my approach to colouring is pretty simple and I'm aware of that. It's not my best skill, which I'm aware of. But it seems a shame not to try to do something with this lovely background, doesn't it? Now, I could have used gesso to seal the background in before I started adding any colour here. But I'm not quite sure how that would have worked out with this, to be honest. Yeah, that's quite nice. And I have got another one over here and I'm going to steal a bit of that red just to make this quite a bit darker because it's right in shadow. So I'm using some red to make the orange even darker. And in fact, I may do that just around here and around the edges and underneath each of these just to add some extra depth of colour and shadow in these places. Okay, I'm convinced this the pen is shifting with the water which is a shame but it is what it is. just means that I have to be very careful with my um, pencil work. Now I do want a colour to go in these holes um, and I do want something that perhaps is quite dark. Um, try this one, this is scarlet which will be an orange red hopefully and let's see how this works in there.
Things like this, I think, give a focal point and help you work out what is happening in the shadows. Might need another a darker colour there. But I haven't really got a darker. But if I have a look at this, this is a this is violet. But I think if I use this where I want it darkest. I think that would work to give shadows. Oops. Not enough pigment, too much water there perhaps. That has darkened them down quite a bit, which is fine by me. I'll come back to those perhaps in a moment. The tops need something doing with them. And again, I think I'm going to use the orange or this just plain orange and see what happens. Oops, trying to put the wrong end of the paintbrush in the water is always a good plan, not. Well, even though there's a bit of orange left on here. That means I'll get some variations in the shades I'm going to use here. But let's have a look at this. We'll bring these out and perhaps a bit of the red just to add some shadows. Yeah, I'm going to have to be careful about the ink. I can see as I'm working that little bits are moving. Not a huge amount because I'm trying not to scrub around at this for that reason, that I know the ink will probably move, but I suppose the way we're around this would be to um, draw the design in pencil and then ink in after you've added the extra colour, but that seems like a bit of a fuss and a faff to me. Trying, trying not to move the colour over the um, pen would be a better idea. I get some blurring of lines, but yeah, I'm fine with that. I don't know. I'm not happy with what I've done with whatever's in the middle. I have to say that. And I know that I'm going to go back and just... Add some water to those sections and just pick some of, if I can, pick some of this up. Not sure if that does anything. I do rather think I'd like um, orangey colour there. So get some of the orange down. Often, I see this a lot when I watch videos, because I do watch videos of people doing things like mixed media and, and what have you. And it often is a case of layering and going back and layering more and then layering again. and Layering colours to build, up, build them up until you get the effect that you want. Um, I think that's why... I struggle so much because I've, I'm not used to that kind of idea. It's not something I've particularly done much of. Uh, I've said this before. I play around with mixed me, you know, various media, and I've played with mixed media, but I've never really got my head around this idea of layers of colours and so on, um, layering colours and keeping on going. With my with my luck, I'll end up completely trashing something because. Um, and also, I tend to use I, I, my preferred medium, my guess, is um, our alcohol markers. And I really do enjoy alcohol markers. Okay, 
I am now, I've got some, um, these are metallic iridescent watercolours, they are the Paul Rubens ones and I want to get a colour that will, I want some golden highlights here and there, I think. So I'm going to use a, I'm going to use quite a yellowy gold, I think. I've got one that's got quite large grains in it and I've got one that's quite fine. I think I'll use the finer one. I won't um, pop it on the screen because I've got, I've actually got the autofocus. I've worked out how the autofocus works so I can fix the focus. So here I'm just adding some gold into the bits there. I also think I'm going to go over these because I'm not happy with those colours, but they will show through with the golden paint, I hope. So we'll see what happens. The worst that happens is I fill this in with a black pen or black paint and try to do something else, but I think it might be okay. Again with these, I'm trying not to overlap the pen too much because it will show up. Actually, I think that's going to be okay. I think that red and purple underneath will work quite nicely with this gold. I, think, I do think so. Let's have a look. Beginning to dry. You can see if you can get the shimmer, a little bit of shimmer there. Just a bit. But I think that'll work quite nicely. I also think I want to add that to these as well. And I think I might go with a slightly different colour. I've got a kind of browny, coppery almost kind of colour here. I say almost because it isn't exactly coppery. But I, th oh it is. Oh that's lovely. But I just want to add some more water to it because I want it quite fluid. So I can perhaps a dot of it and move the dot around inside these. I may have to come back and add some pen to these. I think I'll do some where perhaps I've got some this coppery colour and gold in others. And I can always come back and add little bits of gold. In fact this would be quite nice to use as the shadow. So perhaps I will just fill all of these in with the copper and once they dry I'll, I'll come back with um, gold and add a dot of gold in them as kind of a highlight. My phone's now started pinging. Oh, happy days. It'd be email. You know, as I'm doing this, part of me is going, Angela, you've got coloured pencils, why don't you use those? Which is a possibility. That would really make it truly mixed media, I guess. Okay, just a couple more to do over here. And then I'll start adding the little gold dots to the others. And we'll see what that looks like. And then I'll call this one a day for today. And just a little request that if you've got this far through the video, please consider subscribing. As, um, you've bravely managed to get this far. And if you've enjoyed the video, please give me a thumbs up for it. 
And of course, comments are always welcome. Nice comments, of course. It's, you know, there's, there's plenty of places on the internet where we have trolls and people like that, so it'd be quite nice to have another place where people just are nice to each other. And me. There's no need for it. I'm sure one day I'll come across it, and to be honest with you, I don't know how I'll cope. Right, so I have got some of this golden colour. And I am going to try and just put a dot in. And of course, naturally, I'm starting with ones that are still wet. But we'll see now. Like that. Actually, that works. Just need a bit more water with it. Some time there, so I've got a little puddle I can pick up from, and we just start dotting some in. If some of the background showing through, I'm not going to be precious about it and faff around for ages. This really is more of an experiment to see what I like about this and what I don't. You know, adding colour is always a dangerous thing for me to do because I can truly make a horrible mess of something quite simply but I keep hoping I'll learn either to improve my sense of use or my use of colour my scent you know my colour the way that I you know sort of like combine colours you know, colour palettes I use or even um you know, finally decide, right, Angela, what on earth are you doing? Let's do coloured backgrounds and leave it at that. Because that might actually just work. So that's as much as I want to do with that. I think with the areas that are in shadow, oh, I didn't do anything with those stems. I'll, I will do. I think for the areas that are in shadow, I think I'm going to fill them with tiny little circles. And see if that will because I don't want to lose the colour of the background but I do want to darken it somewhat so what I'm going to try to do in these spaces is to try to keep the circles small around the edge where I can and then towards the middle is just make the circles a little bit bigger so I'm gonna have to go there okay so really tiny around the edge, but bigger and more dense. Sorry, bigger in the middle, more dense around the edges. So we've got that feeling that there's light coming through. But where the smaller, smaller circles are, we've got dent a greater density of ink. There's more ink in the space. And so it naturally shadows and darkens but we still have that background colour showing through. Does that help to make, I think that helps to make a bit more sense of these particular motifs, possibly, the separation of them. Yeah, it does because it helps to, you know, where these spaces here particularly where it's quite hard to make some kind of sense of them. Suddenly we're making sense of them, which is fab. I'd much prefer to add shadow in this kind of way. Don't get me wrong, graphite's fine. 
it works but sometimes a girl's got to go with a pen or a boy or a man or a woman or a person Just do this one section so I can make sense hopefully then. So I'm going around the edge with this one because I've got the space to with tiny little circles. And once I've completed the cir circuit, I'm going to go back with slightly bigger ones. And then the largest in the middle. It's very subtle, but it does make a bit of a difference. That actually has helped to make a lot of sense out of some of these areas. This one is still a bit overlapped. Just tidying up some lines as I see them. Um, I'm also going to just add some lines in here to shadow inside these. Because I suspect I may try using coloured pencils on these or something else. And I'm also going to use a heat gun on the drawing so that the Neocolor wax will melt slightly and hopefully soak the ink up a bit and make it less um, reactive to water again. So this is normally perfectly fine with water. The, micron inks, the pigma inks or the inks in uni pins or any other fine liner that are um, water soluble. And I may try some different watercolours with these and I'm going to go around these with a pen because we've lost that pen and definition there. If it thickens the lines, that's okay, I don't mind. I can live with that. It's almost like I could have done with drawing these as black circles and then just putting the dots of metallic on the top. But I also like the fact that the underpainting does colour the metallics. So I was going to finish, wasn't I? Just can't leave well enough alone. And nope, I'm not adding more colour because I'm fed up of it now. And I mean that in a nice way is I do have a short toler you know, a low tolerance for adding colour. But when it comes to me drawing with pen and ink, I think that's my favourite thing to do, whether it's physical on paper or digital. I do like drawing on paper because I get the sense of the perspective. So there we go, we've got that. just about done. I may try later on. Perhaps I should keep it for a video actually, trying some of the um, water soluble inks on top of these and see how that would work. But there we go. So it's starting to come to life. The colours are very similar to the background, which is what I want because I'd have to use opaque you can see that bit of sparkle there and actually it works quite nicely with the colour underneath it looks quite gold there but when I have when I'm not looking at with the light you can actually see that the reddy purpley underneath with that hint of gold over the top and the little ones also have a look you can see they catch the light as well and but there's some colour in them when they're not catching the light, which 
tones in with the background that little bit. So I'm just going to say thank you for joining me, for putting up with me, saying I finished now and then I go back. But I hope you've enjoyed this and the exploration of adding more neo colour and completing the drawing. I do like these. Simple but effective, I think. Anything like that is. And um, yeah, so look after yourselves. Find time to be creative and I'll see you again in the next video. Take care for now. Bye-bye.